Hi, welcome to James Miller Lifeology, where you learn to simplify and transform your spirit, mind, and body. My name is James Miller. I'm a licensed psychotherapist and a composer. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Let's get started. If you're anything like me, your health is very important to you. I know you listen to the show for tips to simplify and transform your spirit, mind, and body. Well, I have some great news for you. James Miller Lifeology has partnered with BioOptimizers Nutrition. As an avid nutrition and exercise enthusiast, I thought I knew a lot. But after taking a 12-week health course BioOptimizers offers and implementing their supplements, I noticed a huge difference in my energy and my digestive tract. Since you're a listener of Lifeology Radio, BioOptimizers is offering you the same 12-week course absolutely free. Go to jamesmillerlifeology.com forward slash supplements to take this free course. Here is a sample of what you'd learn. How to get 70% more energy in 30 seconds or less. The ultimate key to high performance, health, and longevity. How to turn the tide against uncontrollable food cravings. How to select the most powerful supplements for you. How to stay lean and trim without sacrifice. The simplest and fastest way to detoxification and great skin. And much, much more. To get access to this awesome health course, simply go to jamesmillerlifeology.com forward slash supplements and sign up today. Once again, visit jamesmillerlifeology.com forward slash supplements or simply go to jamesmillerlifeology.com. I have a great show for you today. I'm going to help you encourage yourself. I'll also be interviewing Jennifer Cohn, a woman who successfully made a career change with minimal encouragement from others. As you'll hear later in this interview, Jen is a dear friend of mine. On the date of this episode airing will actually be her birthday. So Jen, all of your friends and I wanted to wish you the best birthday you've ever had. May this year supersede all of your hopes and dreams and you receive more blessings and surprises than any other year. Happy birthday, Jen. I have some exciting news. Did you know that I'm on the radio three times a week? You may hear me on the same station on Tuesdays at 1.30 p.m., Fridays at 9.30 a.m., and Saturdays at 12.30 p.m. You may also hear me anytime on iHeartRadio as well as on all the other major podcasting platforms, including iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, and many others. Simply search for the show name, James Miller Lifeology. It is said that Dante Gabriel Rossetti, the famous 19th century poet and artist, was once approached by an elderly man. The old fellow has some sketches and drawings that he wanted Rossetti to look at and tell him if they were any good, or if at least they showed potential talent. Rossetti looked them over carefully. After the first few, he knew that they were worthless, showing not the least sign of artistic talent. But Rossetti was a kind man, and he told the elderly man as gently as possible that the pictures were of limited, if any, value. He was sorry, but he could not lie to the man. The visitor was disappointed, but seemed to expect Rossetti's judgment. He then apologized for taking up the great artist's time, but would he just look at a few more drawings that had been done by a much younger art student? Rossetti looked over the second batch of sketches and immediately became enthusiastic over the talent they revealed. These, he said, oh, these are good. This young student has great talent. He should be given every help and encouragement in his career as an artist. He has a great future if he will work hard and stick to it. Rossetti could see that the old fellow was deeply moved. Who is this fun young artist? He asked. Your son? No, said the old man sadly. It is me 40 years ago. If only I had heard your praise then. For you see, I got discouraged and gave up too soon. Self-encouragement. We all have hopes and dreams, but unfortunately, many of those dreams die stillborn. One of the main reasons is we were not encouraged. The biggest lesson we can learn is how to encourage ourselves. Not everyone in your life is going to understand what you want to do. Well-meaning people can unfortunately talk you out of the hopes and dreams you have, and unfortunately you never accomplish them. Anytime you want to make a change in your life, you're going to be very fearful. You're going to be nervous about it. That's natural. One thing to really consider is there are actually two steps when it comes to decision making. The first step is the biggest step, and that is information gathering. We often want to make a change, but we automatically think we can't do it because we don't have the experience, we don't have the knowledge, we don't have the foresight. And you're right, you won't be able to do it. So that's why we don't yet make the decision, but we information gather first. The more information that you gather, the more confident you feel that you can make the decision. And then the second part, of course, of any decision making is the actual action part of it. That's when you decide if you're going to do it. But what happens when you're trying to gather your courage to make a change and unfortunately no one is around you or perhaps people are not supporting you the way that you'd like for them to? Think of it this way. What advice would you give a friend who is struggling with something? What advice would you give someone to encourage them to help them? It's the same mentality. When you think in your mind what you want to do, what are the immediate thoughts that you think? You'll recognize that there's a pattern there. If you find that your thoughts immediately tell you that you can't do something or you're not good enough or there's no way you're going to succeed, those are actually our core beliefs that we have. Core beliefs are essentially the foundational pieces of who we are that really permeate our life in many areas. For example, in relationships, if there's a breakup, we automatically think it's our fault. We don't think we're good enough. We don't think we're attractive enough. 
If you get laid off from your job, your job performance wasn't good enough, or a friend leaves, you'd automatically think it was your fault. Unfortunately, those thoughts have permeated the foundation of who you are, and they cause you to second guess yourself. The workaround of that is this. What you'd say to your friend is exactly what you would say to yourself. The five senses that we have are actually used to help us understand our place in the world. In other words, understand the proximity or the distance or the danger around us to make sure that we're safe. When you actually speak aloud or when you hear someone speak aloud, you have to focus on it. You have to listen to what they say. Sure, you may be having different thoughts in your mind, but when you focus on what is said aloud, the thoughts in your mind have to slow down. So the workaround is this. Speak aloud those positive self-affirmations. Speak aloud that which you would speak to a friend of yours who was asking you for advice for what you're going through. The more often you can speak aloud, the more you start to hear it, which quiets down those looping thoughts that go over and over and over again. That little technique will really start to help you. In the morning when you're getting ready for work, speak those thoughts to yourself while you're looking in the mirror. The more often you can say those things aloud, you believe it. Just like a child who's encouraged, they grow up believing that they can do anything possible with hard work. And just like a child who's not encouraged, they will always feel less than. Don't be like the elderly man in the story we heard. Don't wait for someone else to encourage you. You are the one who can encourage you. You are the one who has the ability to change your future, to accomplish all of your dreams. Learn to self-encourage today. Are you struggling today to find your purpose? Has mediocrity set in and you can't imagine doing the same thing for the rest of your life? Are your relationships struggling or you aren't sure how to make long lasting changes in your life? Then today, contact me, James Miller. I will help you recognize the areas in your life that are going really well. And then we'll look at the areas in which you are struggling. We will create actionable solutions to help you create long lasting changes in your life. You don't have to do this alone. Go to my website, jamesmillerlifeology.com and click on the page, work with James. Fill out the form and it will be sent directly to me. Don't let another day go by without finding your way. Your change can start today. Once again, go to my website, jamesmillerlifeology.com and click on the page, work with James. Fill out that form to get started today. Jennifer Cohn is a young, sparkly professional starting a new career helping others. After going back to school, getting all A's, and getting the job she wanted, she learned it doesn't matter how many believers and non-believers are in your life. You are your biggest cheerleader. At the end of the day, you make a choice to take a chance to make a change. Welcome to my show, Jen. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. Yes, I am excited as well. My listeners may not know this, but Jen is actually a dear friend of mine. In fact, if you go to my Instagram, the person that I'm usually at the beach with, that is Jennifer. So <laughs> you know, oh, the paparazzi <laughs> get us all the time. <laughs> yes, they do. But Jen, I can't wait to talk with you about your amazing transformation. You made a complete change and now you are really thriving in your career. So this is going to be a really good show because I think a lot of my listeners today can really relate with what you're doing. Yes, thank you. So let's jump right into this. I know, actually, when I first met you, you were in a different career and some changes were happening in your life. And all of a sudden you decided you were going to make a change. So give us a little bit of your history. So what were you doing prior to this change? Prior to this, I had a great job. I worked for a financial investment company, had great hours, was doing really well there. But at the end of the day, I would go home and I felt that I wasn't happy with the job there. I felt like I wasn't helping people and I wanted Mm -hmm. to do something where I could really relate to people, put a smile on somebody's face and just come home and say, I love what I'm doing. And in that moment, you weren't feeling that? No, in that moment, I felt I was settling as an adult. I was doing the adult thing as far as the nine to five job, great benefits, everything just seemed the cookie cutter fit, except I was going home and I didn't feel fulfilled. Mm. Yeah, which is, I'm sure many people can relate with that as well. You know, we do what we're supposed to do because that's the formula we've been taught. And in doing that, you know, unfortunately, we wake up one day and we're like, I'm just not experiencing this or I'm not enjoying life. Yeah, absolutely. So what was it that you, or how was it that you came up with deciding to go to school? I originally started school in healthcare, but I knew I didn't want to be a nurse, but I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do. So Mm -hmm. it took a few years Later on, I realized I really enjoy everything that relates to the heart. I did a lot of research on what different fields there were, and I saw cardiac sonography. And I I realized right then and there, this is exactly what I want to do. Wow, because you were actually in in finance, in the finance world, correct? Yes, correct. Yes, and so when you decided that's what you wanted to do, how did you say, okay, I'm actually going to do it now? So you had the research and you were able to discover that's what you wanted, but what was it inside of you? Because you had a job that was paying your bills, that was helping you you know, have the life that you wanted, but once again, it wasn't being fulfilled. So what was it inside of you that said, you know what? I am going to go to school regardless. It, it was just 
me. I, I made the decision that if I don't get my courage together and get my mind right to do this, it's never going to happen. I can do the research. I can have all the prep work and find the school and see everything that I want. But if I don't make that leap myself, nothing's going to change in my life. Yeah. Did you have a lot of people who supported you? I actually had more people who did not support me than people who did support me. Mm. So it did make my decision difficult because I wanted everybody to be team Jen. You're doing a great job. Go for it, girl. But there was more people saying, are you crazy? Why are you doing this? And that's kind of what was holding me back for a little while. Was that really surprising to you when you had heard people that were not f for Team Jen? I was very surprised just in the sense of I'm a very supportive person to my friends and family. And I believe if you're doing something to make yourself happy, go for it. You do it. I, I have your back. And so to not have that support, it, it was kind of surprising. And I realized that mm -hmm. I had to take that support I didn't have and add extra support in myself to just do it. So once you started and you made this decision, was there times you're like, oh my gosh, what am I doing? Oh, uh, my first day of school, I would say, I'm, I'm like, am I, am I crazy? What am I doing? Because I knew once my clinical started at school, I would have to quit my job completely. And I was just thinking, can I do this? Can I pay my bills? I had so much doubt, but I realized all that doubt is not going to change what I just started. I just mm -hmm. started this journey. If I'm going to start it with a negative mindset, it's going to end negatively. Yes. Yeah, exactly. That's a really good point. So you started school and as you started to get know, to know more about your field, I'm sure that offsets that worry of, oh my gosh, am I doing the wrong thing or the right thing? Oh, of course. I As soon as I started school and I'm learning everything that there is to know about the heart and blood flow and all that excitement just built inside me, it, it made every day driving to school that much more exciting. And I, I couldn't wait to start clinicals. I couldn't wait to be with the patients. And it just, it made me know that I made the right decision. I'm sure that's very fulfilling as well. So here you are, you're studying. And how did you find that your life just changed as you're getting closer and closer to doing what you feel you're called to do? It was actually an interesting feeling because it was surprising. I was like, wow, this is actually happening. I'm almost done with school. I'm, I'm going to get the job that I wanted. Just to, as much as I worked hard for it and I deserved it, it was still kind of surprising to think mm -hmm. like, wow, this, this, is, this is working out how I wanted. This is how my plan <laughs> played out. I, I do a whole sure. list for every end of the year of, of my goals for the year so I can check them off. And I looked at that piece of paper and I'm like, I've checked off almost every single thing on here. And did you find that yourself, going from business, or excuse me, going from finance to, to sonography, did you find that just your countenance and how you interact with the world around you was different as well? I've always been a very happy, positive person, but I feel like because I'm enjoying what I do, I'm even happier, which is probably obnoxious to some people mm -hmm. at seven o'clock in the morning, but <laughs> I go into work and I'm so excited. I'm like, good morning. And I just want to put glitter over everybody and just be so happy. Whereas before I was just going through the motion. I was at work on time and good morning, good morning. But I didn't have that extra mm -hmm. gen sparkle in my attitude. Now it's, it's, just overflowing. Yes. Yes. As your friend, I've seen it overflow. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. Don't be sorry at all. I think it's great. So let's, let's talk more about, uh, so as, as you were going uh, to school, in fact, I was blessed to be invited to your graduation and you got so many awards. Tell us about the, you know, the uncertainty of, oh my gosh, can I do this? So at the end, here you are getting all these awards. I mean, that had to feel pretty amazing. It felt really good again, just because of some of the negativity that I had, you know, I, I, lost some people in my life that I was close to because it because I was making this life change I knew that my life was going to change in the sense I might not be able to go out and do things all the time because I have to study I, I had I made promises to myself that if I'm going to go back to school I'm not just going to breeze through I want to have straight A's I want to pass my board exams I had goals set and unfortunately you have to make sacrifices to grow so at the end of mm -hmm. the school year, graduating with straight A's, being asked to speak on behalf of my class at graduation, then to receive an award I didn't even know about for best in clinical, it, it was just, I, I was beaming. My cheeks hurt from smiling so much. 
<laughs> yeah, it was great. Yeah, we were all very proud of you. One of the greatest thing, compliments, I think, as well is tell us more about your the place where you had your, your internship, your clinicals. They offered you what? Oh, they offered me a job. Oh, my gosh. It was so exciting <laughs> because I, for some reason, I had my heart set on doing clinicals at Jupiter Medical Center. And that was never a site that my school had. They had all these other sites. And I, I told my teacher, I want to go to Jupiter Medical Center. And when it came time for my clinicals, suddenly it opened up. And I'm very big on everything happens for a reason and angel numbers. And I feel everything works how it should. And it, that was a sign right mm -hmm. then and there. The fact that they never had it and then it opened up, that was my sign. So I just wanted to wow them. I went in there, worked with some great nurses. Uh, the people in, in Echo are just wonderful. The doctors were great. And I just said, I want a job here. And when I said that, obviously, I was still a student. They didn't even have a position open. And I said, it's fine. When I'm done with school at the end of September, I know that I'm going to have a job here. Well, maybe a month before, <laughs> I feel a little bit, uh, you know, demanding maybe. No. When you put something out there and you believe it, it comes true. Yeah. I just, I, all I could think of is I really want to work with these people. I really want to help these patients because you, you start seeing repetitive patients. And it, it was just wonderful. Mm. So about a month before... I was done with school, a position happened to open up and they had the option to bring somebody else on or they could wait for me and they chose to wait for me. And um, as I said before, I'm, I'm very big on angel numbers, which is a, a sequence of numbers, whether it's 1212 or 222. And you just make a wish and you put out into the universe what you want to get back. My uh, start date at the hospital was 1010. Oh, wow. <laughs> that definitely is a strong angel number for you then. <laughs> Yeah, so to me to get hired on an angel number to have that as my start date to me was just is the start of a great future. Yeah, that's that's absolutely amazing. Yes. So tell us more about your boards. I know you're shedding crazy for them, but tell us more about that. Oh goodness. Well, um, I was studying like crazy. I had my first board exam um, in March, actually last year, and I I studied as much as I could, but. I knew that I wanted to pass this board right away, and I was actually the first student at my school to pass this board exam. Um, so they did a whole cake and everything, and, and it just felt so good because not only are you putting in the work for school and your test there, but this is a, a national board exam. So it was a whole nother test. Um, I did that, and it just felt great to know I have one out of the way. I have one more to go. Um, when I finished school in September, I had to do the same studying. And like I said, I, I had to sacrifice a lot, whether it was hanging out with friends or, you know, not watching Real Housewives because I had to study. <laughs> and I, I walked into this test and, and I was terrified when they were IDing me. I was shaking because I was, I was really scared. And I did the first few questions and all I could think of is, oh my God, this is so hard. I went through the test uh, the first time because you can go back and re-answer questions. And at the end, I'm thinking, Oh, I, I'm not going to pass this. I, I'm not going to make it. This is so hard. And I almost had to have a mental talk to myself and say, if you're going to think this way, then you're not going to pass it. Go back through it exactly. again. Look at everything. If you feel you answered it the best, leave it alone. If you feel there's a better choice, change your answer. And I did it. And as soon as I hit submit at the end, it said, congratulations, you passed. And I almost <laughs> collapsed. But I didn't because I was already sitting. So <laughs> thank goodness for that. <laughs> I do remember you contacted me afterwards. Like, oh, my God, it passed. And we're all like, of course you passed, Jen. Why would you oh, not I pass? I was so excited. I started driving the wrong way when I left the testing center and almost ended up in Key West. So <laughs> <laughs> I got a little distracted. Yes, that's the wrong way. Just a little. Yeah, well, obviously, congratulations thank for that. You. So tell us more that the next transition for you. So then you started working there at Jupiter Medical yes, Center. Yes, so I began working. Um, I started with the training. and. Um, I obviously already set further goals for myself after that, but the thing that I wanted to master first was looking at the heart on adults and any opportunity I could to learn, whether it's jumping in there myself and doing the echo, whether it's watching my coworker in downtime, whether it's asking questions to a doctor so I can learn more. I just, I wanted to show that this is what I want to do. This is where I want to be and, and just really shine there. Not only, technique wise by doing a great job, but doing it with a great attitude and, and showing that I enjoy mm -hmm. what I do because you can do a great job 
in yeah. your field and but not have a good attitude and people don't want to be around that it's, it's very true and with that you obviously demonstrated your ability to do that um i know that there was other people that interned there as well and obviously they they wanted you there uh, to, and then to not only represent as an intern, but also to represent as, a, as an employee. So when you made that transition, you're obviously, your, your name is all over the place. Everyone knows who you are. They definitely, from what I've heard, everyone wants to work with you. Everyone enjoys your tenacity, your desire to be the best uh, sonographer you can be. Yeah, I just, I, I've made it very clear to my coworkers that I, I want to learn. I want to grow. I, I want to make our department great, which it already is. and the only thing to make it better is just adding on another great person. And, you know, sometimes mm-hmm. people have their bad days and I want to be that little beam of sunshine that just, Hey, you know what? You're with your second family. Now we're going to have a great day. What can I do to help you? Yeah. Maybe because the reality is when people go to the hospital, they're not there because they're doing well. They're doing, they're there because they need a, you know, something, something dire. Is yeah. Happening. And we never know anybody's situation, whether it's our coworkers, whether it's the patient, you never know what kind of day somebody's having. So it, you, you just have to be excited every day that you're in a good place. Yes. Well, obviously, congratulations for you for getting this amazing job. I and mean, you work so hard, you know, for me being on the periphery and watching you um, before you and I became really good friends, it's kind of seeing that change and, and hearing about what you're going to do and then watching you really invest in that. And, and yeah, you did have to make some sacrifices. And I think many people can relate to that because success is not easy. Success is, is like a bank account. You only get out what you put into it. And so you put in so much in there. And you were able, you were later able to pull out and withdraw so much success for yourself. What would you say the biggest lesson is you've learned about yourself uh, personally in the past couple of years? I would say the biggest lesson would be um, that you have to be your own cheerleader because you mm-hmm. can't expect people to be happy for you all the time, whether they don't agree with your situation, whether they're jealous of your mm-hmm. situation, whether they just don't have the time to invest the happy energy that you do if if you want to do something make a change do it believe in yourself and if the worst that happens is you fail at it you either know that you tried or just try again yeah and that's that's really it's really great advice what advice would you give people who are in your age demographic so if i may speak for you jen is in her her early adult life. Mm-hmm. What, what advice would you give people who, you know, they thought they knew what they were supposed to do and then all of a sudden things changed around? What advice would you give them as well? So not only their own cheerleader, but what advice would you give them to help them say, you know what, I'm going to do this? Well, things happen at any stage in life, mm-hmm. whether I, some of my classmates were grown adults, married children, and they made a change in their life. If you want to change something, mm-hmm. whether it's a job, whether it's a relationship, anything in life that you feel you want to make a change, you just have to do it because talking about it and not taking action is not going to make a change. If you're going to make that choice to want something different for yourself and and better yourself, the only way that's going to happen is if you actually take the action to do it. What do they say? The, in a race, the last person still beats a person on the couch. Absolutely. So we can all be like, Oh, I want to do this. But if I'm still on the couch all the time and I'm not even trying, well, I'm not going to be able to make that change. Absolutely. And and talking about something is not going to change. There's a lot of people that will talk about what they want and talk about what they hope for, but they don't do it. And it, it makes me sad because I know personally going through this that you can do what you want. There's always an answer. Even for me, it took me a, a probably a solid year to have my research together to find a school that was good. It it takes time. And, and I wanted to give up at sometimes thinking it's it's too big of an expense. It's too big of a risk to take. But, you know, a year later, I said, I, I'm just going to do it. And obviously, you, <laughs> you, this time now, you're able to talk about it. And be like, wow, I'm really on the other side of it. It's crazy sometimes to think that I'm living in a place. I, I ended up moving up to Jupiter um, a little bit proactively in the sense that I did not have the job at the hospital. But I said, I'm just going to move to Jupiter because I know I'm getting this job. <laughs> and here I am, thankfully, right over the bridge. But I look around and I think I love why I'm living. I love where I'm working. I love the people in my life. And the only way you're going to get to that happy place is by taking action and doing something. Exactly. Because act, without action, you're like we said earlier, you're simply going to stay where you are. And you have to have a positive mindset. Mm-hmm. There's times where we all are negative and we have our doubts and we have our fears, but it, being positive and just believing in yourself is, is what's going to 
make you successful in life. And well, I like really like what you said as well is because if you have people in your life or not, the point is the only person who can do it is, is you. Um, we can all, you can have all these cheerleaders, but even if you don't have the cheerleaders, the only person that can literally take that first step is you. Absolutely. Well, Jen Cohn, it has been an absolute pleasure having you on my show. You know, you and I have been talking about this. In fact, you were on the books for the longest time, and unfortunately, we weren't able to do it. So I'm glad that we're able to celebrate with you and hear your fantastic, inspirational story with us today. So thank you for being an awesome guest. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me on the show. I'm so honored. I also want to thank you, the listener, for tuning in today. Please subscribe to this radio show through whichever port you joined with us today, or please go to my website where you may sign up for my free newsletter, watch my YouTube episodes, read the articles I've written specifically for you, or you may enroll in the Lifeology Academy where you can take self-directed courses which will help you simplify and transform your spirit, mind, and body. If you'd like to personally work with me, be a guest on or advertise on this show, simply visit jamesmillerlifeology.com. Be sure to follow me on all social media platforms under the name James Miller Lifeology, except for Twitter, which is James M. Lifeology. Once again, thank you so much for your support and I'll talk to you soon.